In Inkscape 1.3, if we open up the Preferences dialog by going to Edit, Preferences, then show all of the interface items, choose Keyboard, and search for the word Reapply in the box here, we have two functions that pop up in here, called Duplicate and Transform and Reapply Transforms. These functions allow us to reapply transformations like scaling, rotating, or translating, either to the original object or to duplicates of the object. To use these functions, we have to use their keyboard shortcuts. However, the default shortcuts currently only work correctly on Windows. If you happen to be using either Mac or Linux, you can try changing the shortcuts to something else. To do this, we can click on one of the shortcuts, which changes the text to New Accelerator, and now we can input a different combination of keys. Then we can do the same for the other one. However, because I'm using Windows, I'll just stick with the defaults. So I'll click the reset button down here. All right, with that out of the way, we can close out of the preferences dialog. Let's see how we can use these functions. First, I'll create an object. And I'll give it a stroke by holding down shift and clicking a color swatch down here. And maybe increase the stroke width a bit by right clicking the value here and choosing something bigger. Alright, now if I go to the Select tool and I transform the object, such as by moving it somewhere else, I can reapply the transformation to the same object by using the Ctrl Alt T shortcut. I can also do this with scaling, rotating, and skewing. Now if I would rather reapply the previous transformation to a duplicate of the object, I can use the Ctrl Alt D shortcut. And I can repeat this over and over. Another cool feature of these functions is that I can apply a transformation to an object, then I can grab a different object, and I can apply the previous object's transformation to the new one. Now as you can see, the new objects have all been rotated around the center point of the original object. This is because when I first rotated the original object, I did so around its rotation center, which is by default located at the center of the object. If I select the object and click it again, I can now see its rotation center, which is indicated by this crosshair. If I want, I can click and drag the rotation center to move it somewhere else. Now if I rotate the object, it will rotate around its new rotation center. Now if I select a different object and perform one of the reapply transform functions, it will continue to use the original object's new rotation center. If you'd like some more examples, I'll show you how I created these designs for the thumbnail of this video. First for the ellipse design here, I'll go to the circles and ellipses tool and create a circle by holding down the control key and clicking and dragging. I want the circle to only have a stroke, so I'll turn off its fill color by clicking the red X down here. Next I'll go to the select tool, and I'm going to toggle off this button up here, which will prevent an object's stroke width from being scaled along with the object itself. Now I'll duplicate the circle by right clicking it and choosing duplicate. Next I'm going to scale up the width of the duplicate by dragging out one of its side scale handles, and I'll hold down shift to also scale on the other side. Okay, now I'll click the ellipse to show its rotation handles, then I'll grab one of the corner handles, and the angle and direction don't really matter, but I'll just hold down the Alt key to snap the angle to 15 degree increments, and rotate it clockwise 30 degrees. Finally, I want to apply the same rotation to duplicates of the ellipse, so I'll press Ctrl Alt D a few times, until there are copies all the way around the circle. For the text design here, I'll first go to the Squares and Rectangles tool, and create a rectangle for the background. I'll choose a random fill color, and I'll turn off its stroke by holding shift and clicking the red X. Next I'll go to the text tool and create a text object in here. I can type out an entire word if I want, but I'll just use a single letter. Then I'll go to the select tool and scale up the text object while holding control to maintain the aspect ratio. Now I want to give the text a stroke that's the same color as the background. But for now, just so I can see the stroke, I'll make it white by holding down shift and clicking the white color swatch. Now I'll increase the width a bit. Now I can make the stroke color the same as the background color by going to the color picker tool here, holding shift and clicking the background rectangle. 
Alright, now I'll go back to the select tool and I'll move the text object slightly down and to the left. Then I'll reapply the transformation to duplicates by pressing Ctrl Alt D. And I can give all of the text objects a different fill color if I want. For the first star design, I'll go to the Stars and Polygons tool, click the reset button up here to make sure I'm using the default five cornered star settings, then click and drag in the canvas. Now hold down the control key to snap the angle. Next I'll go to the select tool and duplicate the star. Then while holding down shift and control to keep it centered and proportional, I'll scale down the duplicate a bit. Now I'll move the duplicate to the left while holding control to maintain the horizontal alignment. Next I'll grab the big star again, click it again to show the rotation handles, and rotate it clockwise 30 degrees. Now I'll select the small star and press Ctrl Alt D to make duplicates around the big star. Finally, I can rotate the big star 30 degrees counterclockwise to set it back to its original orientation. For the final design, I'll go to the Stars and Polygons tool again, and I'll set corners here to 7, then create a 7 cornered star. I'm going to grab this inner handle here and move it out some while holding control to prevent the sides from getting skewed. I'll turn off the star's fill color and give it a black stroke. Next I'll go to the select tool and this time I also want to scale the stroke so I'll toggle this button back on. Now I'll duplicate the star and shrink it down while holding shift and control. Then I'll press control alt d a few times. And there we have it. That's how we can reapply transformations to objects in Inkscape 1.3. Thanks for watching.